Hey everyone, um, we're back from Thanksgiving and all of that good fun stuff, so we're kind of getting back into the swing of things, and Pastor Bethany and I thought it would be a good opportunity as we have entered into Advent to, to talk about our Advent themes, to use that as our guide for these little devotion video times. Um, so I've been tasked with uh, the first one, and then she's going to talk about the alternative meaning to the candles, so we're going to do Hope, Joy, Love, Peace. And uh, she's going to do the alternatives to those on Thursday. So we'll start with hope. Um, I'll start with Advent first. Advent is that it's that crazy time. It's one of my favorite times in the, the church calendar year. Is it's 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 Lent and Advent. I love them because they're they're times of reorientation and preparation and transformation. Uh, we start our new church calendar year with the first Sunday of Advent, and it changes us. It's supposed to be that time to prep. It's not just prepping for Christmas, but it's supposed to, to, to prep us as we go forth into the whole year um, so that we're transformed, we're open, we're, our eyes are seeing and experiencing God among us in ways that we hadn't before, and to transform who we are as people. Um, I think maybe the biggest danger we have as Western Christians or Christians in general is stagnancy. Is um, well, I believe, and that's good enough, and I'm, that's, I'm, I'm done. Um, but God calls us to an ongoing transformation of eyes open, ears open, hearts open. Uh, transformation when it comes from experiences uh, with people, with the world. Uh, transformations that come from those experiences we have with God from our prayer lives that we talked about so much. We're supposed to be transformed. Um, you know, John calls out in the wilderness, we use this text so often during the Christmas season that, you know, to make way, to prepare the way of the Lord. You know, Advent is that time where we recognize that it's done, the salvation is done, but we also recognize that there's work to continue to, to, to be done, and that involves us doing the kingdom work now as we prepare the way, because Christ is coming again, and, and we believe that, and we recognize that, and we anticipate that, and we do so with hope. That, that first piece, that hope is, is that is that part of life that is the anticipatory part of life. Um, it's the thing that pushes us forward. It's that, it's that gift of the Spirit that, that drives us to do something. When we have hope, when we have hope in that new life, we offer it to other people, which means if we're feeding them, if we're clothing them, if we're living into those calls of being the, the, the sheep, not the goats, we, we do the things that we're called to do. That we are, We're hope providers because we have a hope that we believe in. And, and Paul says in Romans, I use this in my sermon on Sunday, that hope doesn't disappoint. It doesn't disappoint. And, and, and it's that thing that just is there and it guides us and it pushes us. We have a hope in salvation. We have a hope in Christ. We have a hope in a God that's ever present. Um, in one of our... I could say our one of our favorite book series, Pastor Bethany and I, um, The Hunger Games, uh, President Snow, when he's uh, dealing in the first one, dealing with the dangers of a potential re rebellion, he tells one of the game makers, he says, hope is the only thing stronger than fear. A little hope is efficient, a lot of hope is dangerous. Now he's talking about potential rebellion. If they have hope, a little bit of it, fine, you know, they'll keep doing the work. But a lot of it, they, they're going to rebel. But Hope is the only thing that's stronger than fear. Hope, that hope that, that we hold on to, that hope in God, that hope in, in the new life, uh, in the divine things, in the infinite things, that is stronger than any fear we know. That is stronger than anything that can cripple us the way fear does. And the Bible constantly tells us, do not be afraid. We don't be afraid because we have something to hope. Because we have a God who loves us, we have a God to hope in. We have a God who makes promises, and so we hope in them. It's the you know, it's that anticipation. It's that excited waiting. Advent is is rife with that. Um, that's why so many of us clergy are like, no, you can't sing Christmas songs because we have to wait. Because if we wait, then there's so much better, and it just builds into it. But that's all what Advent's about is that hopeful waiting. We hope and we hope, and we have this. We have this four-week time of, of conscious hoping where it makes us more aware of the need for a Savior. It makes us far more aware of the need for a Savior in our lives, in other people's lives, and in this world. And, 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 and then it refocuses us, reorients us, 
to recognize that we have that Savior, we have hope in that Savior, and that we can do something for other people, and we can offer that same hope. Martin Luther King said, We must accept the finite disappointments, but never, never lose the infinite hope. Life throws us curveballs. We've had a long, ongoing 2020 of a curveball. A um, lot of swings and misses. It's disappointments. Some people didn't get to see family at Thanksgiving. Some people may not get to it at Christmas. Disappointments. Finite. Finite. Momentary. Christmas Eve won't look the same. Finite. Momentary. But we can't lose the infinite hope. The infinite hope that comes from a Savior who desperately loves us, who desperately calls out to us, who's desperately working to get us to transform our lives to be hopeful. Not just for a life to come, but to, for a life that can be right now. Not just for us, but for everyone. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint. Be filled with it this season. Look for it and share it.